in the trenches with Ryan Roxy. Well, here we are with Cher Ross. More to more babble. I mean, I'm just curious, Cher. Do you, do you have um, a cameo or Mimo or any of those sort of shout out? Uh, are you part of that? At I all? forgot about that. Actually, I do have a cameo. <laughs> I never pimp it. I'm terrible. Um, I do have a cameo. Are you on cameo? I am on cameo. I actually, uh, I completely ripped off Satchel's a song because Satchel he cleans up on that thing. I think he wow. does pretty well on it. So I, I looked at his profile and I heard the song that he plays. So I took the same chords and I just put my own lyrics to it. And I said, yeah, I'm going to rip off Satchel's song. That's amazing. If can do it. If Satchel can do it, so can you. That's sort of my. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go check it out. I'm gonna rip you guys both off. Please do. I'd love to hear that same song on bass. It would be amazing. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Or I'll play it on guitar when <laughs> or I guitar. badly. Here we go. There's Carol Kay. Look at her. There Man. you yeah, go. She's, she's a monster player. She's amazing. <laughs> I love the way Vic puts up a picture of Carol Kay we talked <laughs> about in the first ten minutes. Like, like that was like a That's million great. subjects ago. But I he's know, like. Right? Aren't you proud? Oh, you know what? He also told me to check out the private chat. Okay. Oh. There he is. Okay. He did add that link to the, the bubble song. And he oh, checked cool. it in. So it is there, um, Sparkle Star. But you know what? We've talked about all these bands so far, but the main event. Do we have any um, sort of uh, animation for the main event, Vic? No? No, we don't have it. So, but... You know what? We did have that animation for you got to go back to get forward, but now it's time for the main event. And this is where we have a section called, yeah. uh, well, we're going to talk about Vixen. And I feel that, you know, it's bigger Vixen it, to talk about Vixen. I think it's, it should be bigger than just me and you, you know, it, it should probably be a job for maybe, you know, maybe three people. And, and of course that person coming on with us today is our special birthday guest. Will you please Woo! welcome him to his birth lightning? Come on, baby. Hello. Happy birthday, Britt. Oh there God. it is, folks. Thank you so much. Cher, you look so pretty. I haven't seen you in so long. And you too, Ryan. Very pretty. Thank you very I much. Your I... face, Britt. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so there it is, Britt Lightning, guitarist of Vixen right now, and uh, Cher Ross, bassist of Vixen. And uh, this is all things Vixen, folks, because uh, right now it is time for our section, because I figured you guys would be great on it. It would be kind of time for Let the People Speak. Vic, hit that. <laughs> Well, again, ever get the feeling you've been cheated. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. We lost everybody. But uh, maybe they'll come back unless I'm just losing it on my uh, on my screen. Vic, give me I a thumbs up. If it, everybody. Okay. Everybody's on. Um, folks, we have Cher Ross and Britt Lightning, uh, current members of the band of Vixen. And, um, of course, we are going to be talking about... Um, questions that came from you in Let the People Speak. That's the reason why we call it Let the People Speak. I figured you guys would be good for questions like this because we could ask both of you. Um, Britt, it is your birthday. So right out of the gate, happy birthday. Thank you. That's good. And you are coming to us definitely at a place that has lots of cool guitars. Those look like real, real guitars, unlike mine. But uh, <laughs> where, where, where are you coming from? I am coming from my place in Los Angeles right now. Well, thank you for waking up on your birthday to be on this podcast. It's great. <laughs> very, very cool. So our first question from Let the People Speak comes from at perhaps an artist. And this would be going for uh, both of you. You each can answer it. Uh, sh uh, we'll let the birthday girl go first. Um, uh, Britt, what is your favorite song to play live? Ooh, you know, I, this is what probably everybody thinks, but I have to say Edge of a Broken Heart is always so fun because everybody sings along and everybody's just dancing. And, um, and I, so I like that. I really like to play Love Made Me too, because I love when we kick it off with the acapella harmonies in the beginning. So that's a lot of fun. And, um, and I like when we first start out and we kind of, we usually start the show sometimes with Rev It Up and that's always like a fun one to get things going and warmed up. 
That's amazing. So I know that you sent and now share. Is this a, a little bit of a surprise for you, right? That uh, Brit is coming on, or did she did she let the cat out of the bag? I did. No. She did not let the oh. cat out of the bag. Oh, good. <laughs> not good. at all. And I was already sitting here going, "How am I going to say it's Brit's birthday? How am I going to mention it's Brit's? Okay, I have to bring this up. We have to make a thing out of this. No, I'm so happy." <laughs> That's awesome. People always ask me if she's my little sister, but she's my unicorn sister. She's not my actual sister. I feel like we're sisters, though. We kind of act like sisters sometimes. We do. <laughs> <laughs> we have fake fights at sound check with Foley on the mic. We do. Oh, we do. Yeah. <laughs> what is your favorite song, Cher, to play live in a Vixen show um, or a Down and Out show or a bubble hmm. show? Whatever show. What, what are your favorite songs to play live? <laughs> Songs play a lot. Okay, well, for for Vixen, um, probably "Rev It Up" is still one of my favorites. It just there's just something about the way that one kicks in and and builds throughout the whole song. I really enjoy it. Um, and there's some different parts and stuff, and there's some freedom to kind of go a little, you know, bass playery stuff at the end. So it's really fun. And um, uh, let's see. I, I also, I mean, I have to say, I do enjoy, we, we do um, Humble Pie, I Don't Need No Doctor, and I sing on that, and Britt and I always have this little showdown in the middle, which we have a we have various amounts of fun on, depending on where we're playing. Sometimes, I think one time I got stuck, and I felt like Spinal Tap, ba 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 ba. it had to happen, didn't it, Roxy? Yes, it did. The Spinal Tap <laughs> Mansion had to be there. I was like, I need a roadie, get me up. There is, um, there is no In the Trenches episode that doesn't go without a Spinal Tap reference or name drop at one point. Definitely, definitely. Um, for the down and outs, we haven't uh, toured the the new album, uh, but for the old stuff, my favorite one was Storm I, again because it was just bass frenzy, you know. And that is on like a live DVD, or anybody can search for that on YouTube as well. Like, there's a official, like, really nice recording of that. And then for Bubble, it was um, probably Sparkle Star. That was just man, that was amazing to play live. Love yeah. It. Well, I was I tr I was going to get uh, Griff as well, Gr Guy Griffin. Oh my God, you and couldn't get him. Surprise you, and but but you know what? I I figured while I'm doing this, we have Brit here. I'm gonna just s keep it in my skull because part two with Cher Ross. You know, when we do when you come on in the trenches again, um, I'll focus a little bit more on uh, that down and outs as well. And because it, that it was album, it was his birthday yesterday. There it is. All right. Yeah. Well, maybe maybe next year at this time we'll do it exact same week. We'll just do a year <laughs> anniversary. Well, you know what? It's Hopefully sometime in 2021. Uh, we will move on to our next question. Um, at Jackie Cow e underscore two says, Do you play other instruments? Share, will you go with you first? I think you've answered that question a little bit. You do play a lot of different instruments. List yeah. all the names of all the instruments that you do play. Um, obviously I play bass. Um, and within bass, I, I only play a four string bass and then I also play fretless bass, um, play piano, obviously. Um, I, don't know, I can play guitar. I, oh, somebody's phone is ringing. Um, I play guitar. I can play, was that you, Britster? I'm just calling which you had a birthday. Um, Her phone's going to go blow off the hook. I can, I can play drums but i don't consider myself a drummer if you know what i'm saying yeah yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm that so. way as well you know I, yeah I, I i started on drums but i can't do what glenn sobel does i just can't yeah i can't i can't do I what roxy does can. I, I can't yeah. do what bam does bam swears that on this next twin flames radio he's gonna there's a couple songs where like I'll I'll play drums and he plays guitar and he goes we're gonna record you doing that and I'm like well you're gonna have to loop it because I can't I can't last through a whole <laughs> song with the same intensity oh my uh, god you guys have images for everything um, no, all right so fun. yeah that Vic he's on it all right Britt it's, it's your Britt, turn do you uh, play we, any we other can tell that you Britt play here? guitar. We can yeah. definitely tell yeah. you, you play guitar in back of you. You have some of the best ones um, uh, displayed right now. What do you play anything else? I play the flute. So next Vixen album, flute solo. <laughs> wait, wait. I know more. What? You play. Oh, 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 yeah. Tennis? Yeah, Ping no, pong? Well, sort of, but <laughs> the chimes. I play the chimes like you've never heard before. And you can get it's recorded. recorded acoustic version of um edge of a broken heart yep yes. at michael wagner's studio 
Yeah, that was my like big debut. And I just realized yeah. the hidden talent I never knew I had. And so yeah. I'm really going to focus on pursuing it more this year. Would you consider yeah, yourself I'm, I'm a rhythm wind chime or lead wind chime? Oh, everything. I mean, I tried yeah. it and I realized I could just do it all. I <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Wait, I didn't know you played fretless bass, by the way. I didn't know that about you. See, I'm learning. How bass. did you not know that? Well, I play, that's all I play. In fact, I, there's a fretless bass on the first Vixen album. Don't ask me the name, which song it was, because I don't remember. But I insisted on it being there. I was like, I must play my fretless, you know? It was so, oh my God, it was that's very studious. Wild. Let's bust it out. I love the fact that Brit, you're learning with us. You're what? learning yeah, more stuff right. about your band member. It's, it's bring a band member to the In the Trenches podcast I day it. today. That's I what it, it is. Yeah. I don't think I knew that Brit played flute. Oh, yeah. That's what I started on. I was actually okay. like, when I really was good at reading music and everything. And I joined like the wind ensemble and the jazz ensemble. And I was really into all that stuff with the flute. And then... And then I decided Eruption sounds way cooler on guitar because I heard that and I got hooked on Eddie Van Halen. So then I was like, all right, trash the flute, pick up the electric. Yeah. I, I yeah. just got so what, what about you, Roxy? I, just, I, have to, I, I played, I, have I, I started on trumpet and that really lasted about a week. Oh. It didn't, it didn't, it didn't go so well. There was no wow. real spandex and a trumpet didn't really, unless you were in oh. cool in the gang, didn't really work, you know? But what? I, wow. someone, someone someone sent me a link to um, a girl playing violin eruption. Did you see that yet? It's I pretty cool. Not a while ago, unless it's a different one, new one. It, uh, well, yeah, how many girls play eruption on, on violin? It's just it's not That's a thing amazing. that happens every single day. But yeah, it's probably you know. Look, I have an old school audience. It takes us a while to get these things, you know. Did you hear about that thing called the internet? It's amazing. Oh, yeah, the interwebs. <laughs> Something to do with that. <laughs> We're going to move on to let the people speak right. because these these are questions that I, I say, you had a question for Cher. They didn't know it was going to be for Brit, but a lot of these questions are uh, two-parters. So um, cool. our next question is, Nicholas, this actually would be a bass player thing, all bass player jokes aside, at Nicholas... Uh, the Santo official says, what character trait do you feel is most important? Now, is that Ooh. for a being a bass like, player or being a musician? What do you think yeah. is most important in being in a band? What character trait mm. is it? And that could be for both of you. Mm. But Cher, go first. Well, I mean, I, I guess the the main thing that, that I figured out fairly early on, and of course, I would have a story around this, and I don't want to just like talk forever. So I'm going to just leave That's the story out. That's what the podcast is about. Talk forever. <laughs> Okay, so but the basic story then is that um, the importance of playing the song of, of like when, when I when I was you know I'm a bass virtuoso and I'm this and I'm that blah 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 and you know I I wanted to be you know some sort of a bass god or I just worship Jaco Pastorius and all this stuff. So anyway, my what happened was I auditioned. There was many many bands before Vixen. So one of those bands that I auditioned for and I really wanted the gig was. Um, I can't remember the name of the band. Anyway, I walked in. It was a paid gig. Um, it was all girl band actually, and um, and I didn't play bass. I just did a bass solo over the whole song, two songs in fact. So two really long bass solos, pretty much. I just was like, look at how fast I can play and how many notes I can shred and whatever. I don't know. I just did not play the song, and. Um, about a week later, the producer called me up and he, or manager, the manager called me up and he goes, yeah, you didn't get the gig. And I was like, what? I had to have been the I best. Was so I was so good. cocky. I was, just I was the over. best bass player. You know, I'm like 21 years old, just full of my ego. Right. And he goes, you know what, Cher? Yeah, you were really good, but you didn't play the songs. And so that was my. You didn't do what's best for the song. I didn't. I didn't serve the song. So even though you know you can be the bass player who goes da 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 little 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 little, maybe it's best if you just go chunk 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 and play those eighth notes. And exactly right. You play that bass player. That bass player who got the gig. Yeah. That bass player who got that gig. Carol Kane. No. Jennifer Condos. <laughs> Not Carol Kay, <laughs> Jennifer Condos. <laughs> there she is again on the screen, Carol Kay. Um, the girl who got it, the band ended up being produced by Don Henley and he plucked out the bass player and said, you're mine. And she went to be his touring bass player for the next, whatever, 35 years. Maybe it was right for the song. I love it. That's it. Now, now Britt, 
I don't want to take too much of your time. Are you cool to hang for a little bit or do you got brunch and you got a million things to do with you? Hey, it's your birthday. Cool. I am cool. This is, this is your birthday. Dude, if you're cool, if you, whenever you say you need to leave, we will understand. All right. <laughs> Because it won't, we'll just, we'll just have, all right. Uh, well, your band members, wait, she left. Wait, where'd Come she on go? Back. <laughs> was, was joking. That was Hollywood. I, we don't want you that to was go totally Hollywood. <laughs> but uh, let's move, let's move on to you. What do you feel is one of the best character traits to being in a band? Okay. I'm going to go with something not musical related. Oh. I'm going to go with sense of humor um, because I just have to say like in getting along with people and being cool because if you're going to be on the road with people it's awesome if you get along and like the other people or else it's just not that fun of an experience and one thing I can say about uh, Cher in particular every photo that I ever see of us on stage together we are cracking up like we're we're seriously we look like we're or like I'm really having a good time. It's miracle. Yeah, and it's always so much fun. And um and that makes everything better. It's just yeah, see like that. Like that I think we're having okay. fun. I like I never know what we're laughing at so hard, but I know what we're laughing at. Like in every picture. <laughs> And I think that's super important. <laughs> camaraderie with the whole band. Like we all like have so much fun. I look so forward to, you know, yeah. being together in somebody's hotel room before the gig and drinking wine. And we have like slumber parties. We have our little stuffed animals and our, <laughs> our little, yeah, we just look like that all the time. I love it. I love it. Well, that is, you know what? I, I feel being able to get along with your fellow band member is in showing up on time how do you guys feel about showing up on time oh, that's huge all right good, there you I'm go. always on time i feel like being late is the most disrespectful thing my dad's a navy guy and if you're not 10 minutes early you're way late you're just late dude yeah, like, that's that's the alice cooper rule i love it all right we're, yeah. we're moving on because this this question will definitely be for both of you as well um it is heart is it it comes from deep 17 and it's it says uh, is it harder to be a musician as a woman, um, Vic, do you have that at all? No, he's looking for it right now, but there you go. Is it harder to be a musician as a woman? Uh, Britt, we will start with you this time. Do you feel, I mean, you don't know any other way. <laughs> you're, you're a woman, so. But <laughs> right, right, haven't that, change yet, yeah. <laughs> until you can, <laughs> until you can. No, but uh, do you feel, um, you know, both being in the rock and roll world, and the, it's, it's, it is male dominated, you know, there's more, there's more guy bands, there's more guy guitar players in the world. That's just, that's just what it is right now. It's definitely changing. You know, I, I've played in bands with um, Orianthe. I played with, with uh, currently Nita Strauss, um, Josephine Forshman. I never played with Carol Kay. God, would you quit bringing <laughs> that yet. photo of Vic? <laughs> but I have not yet played with her. I would like to get her on the podcast and uh, maybe play a few songs before, um, well, then Jennifer, then Josephine Forshman, I played, she played drums in uh, Casablanca. I don't know if you know Josephine, amazing drummer as well. She played uh, drums in Sahara Hot Nights as well. But um, as, as far as guitarist basis, do you, have you found it hard to be a musician as a woman? Britt? Um, I think you have to work a little harder to kind of initially prove yourself. People just assume in the beginning that you don't know what you're doing. I mean, I still get people like when I'm, setting up they think i don't know how to plug in my own pedals it's like how would i not know how to plug in my guitar they think like oh are you gonna need help with that you need somebody to do that for you it's like no <laughs> no not at all um but uh yeah so i think i think that's the main thing but i think um, honestly Britt, it's just guy it's it's roadies and and honestly there's a lot of techs that are female now as well but i think it's mostly male roadies that just want to get closer to you and your guitar that's what it yeah. is. They just say, can, I, can I help you, please, please? Can I plug this in, please? <laughs> oh, I'm going to stop so, saying no. I don't need help and be like, yeah, I have no. What do I, where does this one go? And just have them all <laughs> for me all the time. I got to start playing that card a little bit more. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, how do you feel That's about awesome. it? Uh, well, I is, definitely think that, you know, um, I mean, the, 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 I mean, we'll get into this, I guess, in part two as well. Like the reason I ended up in Vixen was partly because like nobody would even take my phone call in 1986 when I was calling up bands to join their band. Like, Hey, I read your, I saw your ad and you're looking for a bass player. And they'd be like, Hey, Tommy, there's some chick on the phone. <laughs> and just hang up on me. So I think it was 
way harder back then to be taken seriously in the rock world. Although, um, you know, I had come from like that whole jazz session thing and it didn't matter at all to them. They were just like, either you can play or you can't, you know, um, as soon as there was um, entertainment and performance factors involved, then it became a lot more important. Um, I, I don't know that it's necessarily harder. I think maybe there's there's always that moment where you sort of feel like there's people standing on the side of the stage going, okay, let's see if they can really play or da da da, whatever. Um, I think you guys but, prove that every single night that you yeah. can, and you have. Yeah, I that. mean, You've proven that. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. the only the only thing that I still see, and and I hope people can show me examples, is there's typically. Um, I'm just going to pick on. I'm I'm going to name the Alice Cooper band. How many guys are in the band? How many chicks are in the band? There's one chick. Um, well, two. We have Cheryl. We, we consider Cheryl part not, of the band, Alice's wife. But yeah, I, I get to what you're saying. But, you know, but she's not playing stage. guitar. She's not playing a non-traditional yeah. instrument. You know what I mean? Right. So it's like it's it's it becomes like almost a thing if there's two chicks in the same band, Wendy and Lisa. You know what I mean? It's like or it's either right. one chick because it's kind of okay or else <laughs> there's Brit and me in a case we're so goofy or, or else it's later share or else it's <laughs> what was that it's a refrigerator not a road oh, was it a refrigerator maybe it was a wine cooler Did anyone ever tell you not to play in refrigerators that's, a, that's rule number one as a child i learned <laughs> <laughs> so I, I i'm going off on some weird tangent it was more of an observation than anything you know um well if you if you look at fleetwood mac I mean, or the, uh, the, yeah, and that was sisters. definitely a great one. Yeah. Yeah. And they formed they, but, the band. But I, yeah, yeah, I mean, more of like, like when it comes to like, like, uh, like session, like the hired guns or whatever, there's usually only going to be one unless you're the band, like Hart or, or Fleetwood Mac. Right. I see it. That's yeah, more okay. the, the normal is what I would say. It's usually well, you guys have had the choking guy in your band over the years. Right. You've had the exactly. you have that. I mean, I, I saw Ace Von Johnson, uh, you know, his name in in the <laughs> sort of lineup list. He was your he was your token dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. And we did do a mixing gig with with all different singers because Janet had had brain surgery. That's and right. So we brought in, you know, Todd from Queensryche. We brought in Tammy from Faster Pussycat and um, Danny from um, Danny. Yep, from Taiketo. Um, yeah, yeah, and then had, at the very end, everybody jumped on stage to sing backups on Edge and I'm more, and, more yeah. and it was awesome. Wow. Yeah. So, so well, we this... did have a night where Vixen had many guys. It was fun. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And, and what do you what do you guys got? Well, that's a great picture, Justin Hawkins. Uh, you know, I, I think I, 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 I sent you an email saying, do you have any connects with with Justin to get him on the podcast? Oh, but we're trying to get an email. Well, there you go. We, we, you know what? Now He's you can awesome. put in the good word. You say it's it's my birthday. Yeah. We're gonna get him or his brother because we we like both of you know we lo we love the darkness Super over good. here on in the trenches. And folks, yeah. uh, just real quick plug: if you are listening to us on Apple, Spotify, or Stitcher, or any of your favorite audio platforms, thank you so much for doing that. But we want you here on the Ryan Roxy official YouTube channel. So hit that subscribe button right there. Right there, I don't know, Vic. Oh, there you go. And uh, come join us here and make sure you subscribe. Thank you, guys. We're hanging out with Brit Lightning, and uh, uh, it's her birthday right now today. So wish her a happy birthday by following her on Instagram. We will get to everyone's socials in just a second. And uh, sort of our special guest, Cher Ross, um, who's a we're just talking all things share Ross today, but it, it ends up we're in our segment of let the people speak. And a lot of your questions are for Vixen and which will lead us to this dovetailing of uh, sh live shows. It comes from at Claudia Bonni and it says after a super show and seeing the audience's response, what is the feeling at that moment? So, uh, you know, share, I'll go with you. First, um, how do you feel after, you know, just putting it a, a great show together? And uh, what is that? What is that feeling? Oh, that's a great question, Claudia. I think it just feels like you're super connected and like you've served, like I feel like I've served my gift. Like I've, I've, I've given fans the way that I want to feel when I go see my favorite bands. Um, I hope that I make the fans feel that way. So yeah, it's it's amazing. It's a super, super high. And then um, yeah, it's an honor. It's definitely an honor. I don't know if that answers that. I hope it does. It just it feels amazing. 
And Britt, do you feel the same way or do you have a, a special, you know, feeling that you get when you play in front of a great, a great show? Yeah, I think it's just a feeling of gratitude, like so grateful that I can do that. I can get up on stage and and it's like such a transfer of energy between us and people in the audience. And it is a high and it is, um, you know, it, it, uh, music is so spiritual and it's just like a. I don't know. I get an overwhelming feeling of gratitude. Like I can do this. I can do this for a living. This is so cool. I'm so lucky. Um, I just feel lucky after every show. And um, so even if you're having a bad day or whatever, it's like put on the best show because like you, you get to do this. This is, this is amazing. Well, we were talking, I was talking to Cher earlier at a very young age, I knew what I wanted to do. Um, I didn't really have a backup plan. Like a lot of people say, you should have a backup plan in case this doesn't work out. This, no, I knew what I wanted to do at a very young age. I think around age 11, I think Cher, you probably uh, decided right, right around the same age, maybe even when you were eight doing those shows all around uh, Minnesota with your parents and your family, extended family. I mean, you knew at a very young age. Uh, did you as well, Britt, know that at a young age, this is what you wanted to do? Um, I realized it at like 15 years old. Yeah, 15, 16. Then, then it was just like, okay, I can't figure out anything else that I want to do. Although I did, my parents were like, you need a backup plan. Like, we know you don't want one, but like, you can just go live on the street. But if you're under our, our roof, you need to have a backup plan. So you, I ended up. What? what is your backup plan? Oh, well, I mean, I don't know, but <laughs> so, I, mean, I wanted to go to Berkeley, you know, and study guitar and just be really into it. But then I ended up studying music business um, at Northeastern. So anyways, they convinced me to go and learn the business side of things. And, you know, you can apply a business degree to anything, really. So it was helpful. And I'm glad I have it, you know, especially during COVID and stuff like that, when we can't play live shows. So, I mean, when you can have global pandemics, a backup plan isn't the worst in the world. It's not the worst at all. Yeah. I'm, I'm sort of yeah. learning by the fly putting on a podcast, but uh, at the same time, I think we've always tried to think a little bit out of the box. Cher, we're, we're survivors. We've been in the trenches, you know, a little bit longer than Brit, I would say. Um, we've, we've like, you know, we're, we've, and, and we've navigated through all these different projects, all these different loves for different types of music. So um, I, I applaud the backup plan. I do. Um, I just didn't have one. And, and I moved down to Los Angeles with with that hyper focus of this is going to happen, and um, it, luckily it did, you know. And and but but I do think it's it you can't just sit around and wish for it. You do got to put something into action every single day if you are serious about it. And um, I guess do you have any advice share about like what someone should do if this is what they want to do for a living? You know, what is the one thing that you could say? Okay focus or, you know, uh, network or wish, <laughs> just dream, <laughs> dream of, a, dream of a big unicorn, the unicorn of rock. <laughs> <laughs> that photo is definitely from Brit. Um, <laughs> um, the, I would say the one thing is, uh, you know, get experience, like say yes to as many situations as you can. I think it's so important to be open and just play and play and play. I mean, obviously, you know, if you're just starting out, then then practice, you know, a, a ton. Um, one, one thing I know I was certainly guilty of when I was, um, <laughs> somebody wrote magic with the unicorn thing, when I was super young was, you know, as I sort of told you in that story, I was really cocky, like super cocky. Um, so I had to have that kind of beat out of me a little bit and, and, and then I opened up to it though, you know, I, I, I was aware of it. So I think the main thing is like playing a lot and being open, um, so that when you do hear those kind of, you know, when you, when you get the feedback, you can hear it. And I think the difference is knowing what feedback is valid and what feedback is just crappy and maybe jealous or whatever, you know, you have to always kind of balance that out for for yourself and trust your gut on that. But I think the main thing is just, just playing, just play as much as you can experience you can't teach experience that's very cool oh. that's very good i'm ryan roxy and i've taken all my years of experience of playing guitar and i want to pass the torch of rock and roll on to you check out the system 12 guitar method hello folks roxy here thanks for watching the video and if you liked it hit the subscribe button or one of the videos around me to watch more if you'd like to please leave a comment if you didn't like the video 
Maybe you'll forget how to type. Thanks. Yeah.